So here you can see the types of gastric and uh, duodenal ulcers. So these are the five uh, types of gastric and duodenal ulcers, uh, which uh, will be used by the surgeons uh, to know which patients require uh, surgery and what type of surgery before surgery, uh, they will uh, plan according to that. So what is refractory ulcers? So if any patient uh, having persistent ulcer, even after completing eight weeks of uh, course of PPA, then uh, we can label them as refractory ulcers. We had to check for the compliance to the treatment and uh, we had to confirm the H. pylori eradication and uh, whether the patient is continuing the NSAID usage or smoking, we had to look. So we already know that medications we have to see, H. pylori eradication, fast metabolizer or any rare causes like gastrin secreting tumors or TB, lymphoma neoplasms also we have to rule out. So what are the risk factors of non-healing or ulcer more than two centimeters or hypersecreting tumors, neoplasms. So these patients request prolonged uh, anti-secretory treatment and uh, sometimes uh, double dose PPIs and rarely they require surgery. So what are the complications? So uh, most common complication of peptic ulcer is bleeding. So these patients, uh, almost 15% uh, of uh, patients may develop bleeding. And more often, and especially in the age more than 60, they develop bleeding. The, what are the poor predictors of uh, hemorrhage from peptic ulcer is age, definitely, shock and multi, uh, multiple transfusions. The location of the ulcer is uh, a poor uh, indicator of uh, hemorrhage, uh, especially less curvature ulcers because the ulcers are adjacent to the left gastric artery. So high chance of bleeding and posterior duodenal bulb ulcers also has high chance of bleeding. So this is the forest grading. So I will show you the images. So first here you can see uh, a clean based ulcer on my extreme right and followed by a bleeding flat spot and adherent clot. And this is a visible vessel and this is oozing and this is sputting. So why it is very important is, so we can know which patients uh, are having high risk of re-bleeding. So actively, so clean blaze ulcers, the risk of rebleeding is 3%. So there is no need of any intervention except uh, giving double dose PPI is enough. So up to flat spot, we can treat medically. So from oozing uh, without stigmata, adherent clot and active arterial bleed. So these patients require special care and attention. So these patients require endoscopic management. So here you can see the blood supply of the stomach. So left gastric artery and uh, gastrodiurnal artery. These are the two areas uh, where if ulcer is there, there is high chance of bleeding. So here, you know, uh, so how do we treat uh, upper GI bleeding? Physical examination and uh, after stabilization, uh, we start PPIs and we do an endoscopy. And after endoscopy, we'll plan accordingly. So upper G endoscopy has done. So if it is a flat pigment spot or clean based ulcer, only oral PPA and early discharge. So if it is oozing, then we can do clipping or thermal therapy and followed by twice daily PPAs. If uh, major stigmat of bleeding that is actively bleeding, then we can do dual, dual treatment like epinephrine and uh, either thermal or uh, APC. So here, you can see uh, how we treat uh, acid peptic diseases. So there are uh, four varieties of uh, endoscopic management. So one is thermal. So in thermal, uh, there are two types. One is contact and non-contact. So non-contact is APC, organ plasma coagulation. So he, uh, we can uh, cauterize the uh, blood vessel in the ulcer. So in that way, we can stop the bleeding. In contact, so heat probe, hemostatic forceps and RFA, radio frequency ablation. These three comes under contact. So by using this, by applying the mechanical uh, touch, we can uh, ablate the blood vessels. And second thing is injection. Injection is by uh, injecting the adrenaline ad around the ulcer uh, can cause uh, tamponade and, uh, and uh, <coughs> decreases the blood supply to that ulcer. And mechanical, so uh, mechanical, usually we uh, put mechanical uh, for uh, actively using ulcers, uh, anything above 2C. 
so by combining injection and mechanical we usually combine for 2 3 uh, 2b and 2a and topical that is hemospray this is a newer modality of uh, getting uh, sir of doing hemostasis so here the various uh, types of instruments that we routinely use for uh, peptic ulcer disease endoscopically so these are uh, hemospray and purostat this is a newer um, mechanism of uh, attaining the hemostasis <coughs> so treatment so first we inject the ulcer uh, and we'll uh, after followed by we'll apply the thermal coagulation so the chance of free bleeding will decreases from uh, 80 to 20 percent so what is the role of ppi in gastric ulcer or pe peptic ulcer disease so peptic ulcer disease usually uh, the ppis will uh, if the pH increases above the 4, it prevents the enzymatic uh, digestion of the blood clots. So, the rationale of uh, giving PPS in uh, gastric or uh, peptic ulcer diseases to maintain the pH more than 7. So, the clot stability will be there and hemostasis will be achieved. So, usually we give the uh, infusion for uh, first uh, 48 to 72 hours followed by uh, BD dosage. So, you, because the high chance of re bleeding in the first 72 to uh, 120 hours. <coughs> so, what are the indications of surgery in present uh, era? So, perforation, bleeding, or gastric out of obstruction, or concerns of neoplasia. So, these are the areas where the surgery surgeon has uh, some role in peptic ulcer disease. So, surgical management. Uh, so, there are um, four. Um, uh, ways of uh, diurnal ulcer management. One is vagotomy plus drainage. Uh, the immediate complications are more and uh, only 10% ulcer recurrence. So, so usually uh, vagotomy is ne needed only for diurnal ulcers because it decreases the acid secretion. So whenever you do vagotomy, you have to bypass the, uh, like you have to do the drainage. Otherwise they will have uh, gastroparesis and uh, the food will stay there in the stomach. And high selective agatomy, so low complication rate, but ulcer recurrence will be high, almost like 30%. So vagotomy plus antrectomy, this is the best for gastric ulcers. And um, antrectomy, uh, either with Bilrath 1 or Bilrath 2 is the treatment of choice for gastric ulcers. So <coughs> not only uh, surgical, uh, interventional radiologically, we also can also be uh, has a some role in peptic ulcer diseases, especially by doing embolization of the bleeding arteries. So then second most common uh, complication of peptic ulcer disease is perforation. So almost like uh, six to seven percent. And uh, depending upon the location and uh, it penetrates either into the pancreas or into the liver. And usually we'll manage by conservatively, uh, whoever uh, deteriorating or developing uh, peritonitis or sepsis or hypertension are unstable, they have to go for surgery. So another uh, least common complication is gastric outlet obstruction. Here you can see the CT showing hugely dilated stomach. And uh, in endoscopically here, you can see the food stasis in the body and fundus of the stomach and uh, narrowing of the pylorus. So treatment is usually by giving uh, uh, supportive uh, medications, PPIs and fluid replacement, followed by um, endoscopically, we can uh, do balloon dilatation of the uh, pylorus gastric outlet. If endoscopically, if uh, patient fails, then we can go for the surgical treatment. So last is a stress ulcer. So it is almost like uh, 1.5 to 2.5% uh, incidence in ICUs. Risk factors, there are many like respiratory, mechanical, liver disease patients, burns. So usually PPI infusion uh, will be suffice for these patients. So these are the various uh, guidelines and recommendations for non-ulcer uh, varicial GI bleeds. So, I, uh, so I'm going to show some endoscopic pictures of uh, different uh, etiologies of gastrointestinal bleeds. So here you can see the picture of uh, severe distal esophagitis. So here you can see the white, white linear streaks are ulcers. Actually, these are the three ulcers. So one is in 12 o'clock, uh, 7 o'clock and 3 o'clock. These are the three ulcers. So this uh, endoscopically, 
it is showing severe distal esophagitis. So another patient, so this is a Mallory Vistier. So the linear cut in the lower esophagus. Here you can see the white arrow. This is the cut. So this is Cameron's ulcers. So endoscopically, endoscopically this is the hiatus hernia and uh, there is ulcer in the hiatus hernia that is called Cameron's ulcers. This is dilophys lesion. So dilophys lesion uh, is a AV malformation. Oh, sorry, uh, this is aberrant uh, artery, submucosal aberrant artery. So here you can see. So this is malignant gastric cancer bleed. And this is telangiectasia. Telangiectasia is uh, basically AV malformation. And this is gastric uh, antral vascular ectasia. Usually we see in uh, CLD patients, SLE patients, and scleroderma. So we usually we uh, do APC for these uh, GAVE patients. Uh, there will be excellent re results. And even we do banding for this uh, GAVE also. So this is another picture which, which is showing hemobilia. So here you can see uh, the blood is coming from the diurnal orifice.